Hi everyone, I'll be doing a quick video tutorial today about Ancient Warfare and all of its circuitry. As when I started using Ancient Warfare, I realized that there is actually pretty much zero videos related to the circuitry, or if there is, it's done very quickly and gives you barely any information at all. So I'll be going over it today. As you can see, these are the three main circuitry works for Ancient Warfare. We have the distributor, the shaft, and the junction. These are categorized into three categories, uh, three tiers more or like. So we have the light versions, medium, and heavy. And as you can probably guess, the heavier you go, the better it is, as you'll be able to transfer stuff at a better rate, as well as lose less energy as you transfer them at longer distances. But for this one, I'll just be using the light ones, as they're pretty much good enough for the job for this video. Also, to, if you wanted to see the quick recipe for all of these, you can see that most of them are created with wood. So in survival, I'm guessing this would be the better one to use, as in the early stage anyway, as it'll be easier to craft and doesn't require as many resources. So I'll just do a quick browse of them, since, of course, if you're going to be playing modded, I'm guessing you're going to have something like not enough items with you to be able to see them quickly. Okay. So, first of all, we have... Which one do we have? We have the junction here. So, I'll just quickly grab me one of these. Put it up. And we have our junction. So you're probably wondering what the hell is the junction for? Well, the junction allows you to be able to have many inputs inside it and have one output. So as you can see, this little curved area here, that is where the output would be. So for example, let's grab us a farm, uh, one, of the far uh, one of the farms from Ancient Warfare, grab a couple of saplings, hmm, which sapling to use? Oak sapling, nice and easy. Grab a couple of those, ah, now that we don't want. Okay. So, first of all, let's have something to generate power. So, for this one, I'll be using the oh, other way around for you, Sterling Generator. And these run with any type of fuel source that the friends can use, so we'll be using coal. And we'll put down the tree farm there and give it a few saplings. So as you can see, there is no NPCs to run this. Okay, first we'll quickly go over the shaft. So the shaft allows, it's basically just a normal circuit and it's one way, so it makes things kind of easy. So as you can see, you could technically for something like this, just use the shaft on its own to be able to power this. So let's put some block of coal in there. You can see it's already working. But for example, let's say we have two generators. And we want both of these generators to be powering this tree farm. So what, we would do, what we'd want to do is first start off with a couple of shafts. And also, the shaft direction tends to be where you connect to. So if you were placing it this way, it wouldn't be the right way, as it'd be grabbing power from this end and sending it this way. So you want to start off by looking at where you actually want to send the power to. Though you could also, if you're a bit lazy and just want to place it down however you want, you could also get the hammer from Ancient Warfare. Not the custom NPC hammer, but the Ancient Warfare one, which is this one. 
and you can also rotate it using this. Like that. But I find it easier to just plain off start by looking at where you want it to go. Okay, so like this. And we want these two. Why are you facing the wrong way? There. Okay, so we want both of these to be able to power into here. So, first let's grab our junction and make sure we connect it to here. The, the output side is always facing to where you click, so to opposite you basically. So, clicking over here would make it let me just try it again. So clicking towards there will make the output side go here. Or if you've done it accidentally wrong and you don't want to destroy it, then you could also use the hammer until you get it facing the right way. Though it's a bit fiddly. Yeah, there we go. Even though it, the animation ain't there yet, but as you can see, the drilled inside is facing this way, so this side's the output. Now... Okay, I kind of messed up there slightly. Uh, we need one more shaft before doing that, because we want it to meet both in the same area. Now, there's our junction. And now we want to connect the shaft to both sides. And there we go. Now start running some power here. And connect another shaft to there. So now you have two sterling generators running this. Now, how about if we had, let's say, more than one farm? So let's say we had one farm here and another farm over here. And we want to use both of these generators to be able to power all of this. Now what we'd want for this is the distributor. The distributor works a bit like as a opposite of the how do you say this? The opposite of the junction. So this one will only accept one input but will have a lot of outputs. Whereas the junction has one output but many inputs. So this is great for when you're trying to use multiple farms and you want to spread out the energy. Also, when you right click it, you can see that this side is the input. So you want you want the input to so basically it's the flat side, the input is the flat side, everything else with the drilled in sides are the outputs. So that's where where energy comes out from. So as you can see, if you click it on a block away from you, the input will be facing this way. So if you want the input going there, then we'd want to click it facing here. So as you can see, the, the power is being inputted into here and transferred over there. But of course, we want this to also be powering this. So now we just connect the shaft all the way straight over to here. And as you can see, I kind of messed up there, so let's use the hammer until it connects nicely, and there we go. And now we also want to connect this. Oh, not the distributor, the shaft. So as you can see, we're going to need two outputs again, so we'll be using another another distributor here. And connect it to the shaft. There. And now we have two areas. That's doing plantation. As you can see. Now, we have at times we have situations, like here with farm where all of the power 
is kind of being wasted because all of the farm is currently planted. So we're generating a lot of power, but it's going nowhere and literally just being wasted. So it's kind of like leaving the lights on with nothing going on. So what we can do is start using these, which are called the light flywheel controller and the energy storage. Now, the energy storage is a bit of a pain because when you have a flywheel controller, it has to be directly underneath it to be able to work. And also, when you want to add more, you can't put it directly underneath it. What you have to first do is destroy the one at the top or dig it out and then put a new one underneath to be able to connect the two, which is quite a bit of a pain. And I don't know why the motor decided to do that, but that's how it works. And it won't work if you connect it to the top. It has to be at the bottom. So for over here, we probably... Ugh. This is quite a bad setup to demonstrate, isn't it? Okay, uh, I'll just quickly expand this. I'll pause the video quickly and come back to you in a second. Okay, again everyone, just extended quite a bit here, so it'll be a bit easier to demonstrate this. Okay, so the flywheel acts as a way of storing the energy. So let's say we put the flywheel here because it's the area before it starts hitting the tree farms. We'd want to put our flywheel here. And as you can see, you'd also want it to be facing in the opposite direction to where you want it to go. So input, when you place it here, that would be the output section. And this side would be the input. I believe it's also possible to connect more than one into it. So let me just double check that. Nope, I'm wrong there. Ignore what I just said there. That is completely false. So only two way. And this will help to store. But of course, to be able to store the energy, you're going to need these things. You're going to need the uh, energy storage. So this is where it becomes quite a pain because if you have your system running around here, you have to put it underneath. So if you've got areas underground, this is going to be a bit of a problem as, of course, if you're in a level of like Y10, then you're not really going to have much area unless you build it upwards and then start moving your circuitry down, which is a pain. In all honesty, it's quite a pain, but it'll do the job. So as you can see here, once you connect it to there, it begins to slowly spin. So this is how you can see that the energy is being stored. Of course, if you're using the heavy versions of these, it does take quite a lot more power to be able to actually see it start spinning. But that's because it takes that much time before it's fully stored. But it will start spinning after some time. So this will allow you to store the, the not data, store the energy. However, there is loss of energy around here, so it's only good for like a short-term storage. So it's not permanent storage, but it'll be good enough for situations like this. So for example, let's say all of your trees started fully growing. And we can show this by giving trees a bundle of bone meal. As you can see, it starts working in the speed of light because it has a lot of stored, data, uh, stored energy and it uses all of the stored energy here to be able to run that. As well as the tree farm also has a small buffer but not as much if you didn't have one of these. Of course you can expand this a lot more and make it so that it stores more energy. So the longer it is, the more it stores from what I believe. Though, don't quote me on that, but I think that's how it works, because it did say in the manual that it balances the energy out. So that will be able to store more. And if you have a bundle of these, of course, Sterling generators ain't exactly the best way to generate energy, resource-free anyway. I'd suggest using the water wheel instead. 
but we're just using the Sterling as it's one of the quickest ones to show and set up. And yeah, that's pretty much how all of the conduits work and how the flywheel and flywheel controller also work. Flywheel energy, sorry. So, quick recap. Shaft is one way, pointed in one direction. So the direction you're pointed at is where it will be outputting, and the other side is where it will input. You can see it by the big square here, big square side is the input, the tiny thin bit is the output. Now, we have our junction. Is that our junction? Yes, that is a junction. <laughs> Got a bit confused there. Uh, texture wise. So, as you can see, junction has only one open section, and everything else is flat. So, all of the flat sides is where you can put inputs into. So, if you could technically. One, two, three, four. Yep, five. Yes, six sided. Duh. So you could technically have five things going inside here and then all of that being outputted into one area. Now we have the distributor. So distributor, one side input, everything else is output. And as you saw a while ago, for both of these, where you face it is where the output will go. Though for the distributor, it's more of where you're not facing. Where you're facing, sorry. Will be where the input is. So, over here. And that's pretty much it. So, maybe to some of you, this seems like a pretty basic thing, and you should be able to understand it straight off. But for people like me who have never modded in their lives before, and haven't used stuff like AE2 or other circuitry related stuff, it was quite confusing at first, so hopefully this video was able to help you out. If you liked it, give it a like, and well, I wouldn't say subscribe because I'm not expecting to be the very big person in video making, but if you feel like subscribing, why not? Alright, hope this all helped you out, guys. Bye!